I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Red, the community moderator from Harvest Finance. Red, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I'm really excited to dive into the yield farming strategies and what's going on in the DeFi space with Harvest Finance. And I would love for you to just start us off with a high level overview and the focus of Harvest Finance, and then we can jump into the details. Sure. Um, so Harvest Finance is a yield farming aggregator. So uh, yield farming is like the process of actively going project to project, trying to collect rewards for participating um, in that ecosystem or platform um, that's giving away specific rewards, right? So generally like tokens associated with the platform, think like Uniswap when they did their airdrop of the Uni tokens for people that use uh, the platform they gave away tokens. Um, so yield farming is more like the active approach of, of again, going to those platforms, providing liquidity there um, generally is the, the main way to do it. Um, leave it over a certain amount of time and like, you know, minute by minute, you may be collecting uh, quote unquote free reward token for leaving your money there. Um, there is some risk to that. Um, you know, some of those farms are kind of fly by night projects. They could be Ponzi schemes in themselves. Um, you just don't really know. So, you know, while there's kind of like a mad rush to get as much as you can in like this wild west of, of cryptocurrencies, um, there is like a viability there as well uh, with some of these just really cool projects building innovative things and then just using like yield farming or these rewards and incentives um, to as a way to attract attention. And then also tie in these eco or these participants into the ecosystems that they're trying to generate. So like, you know, a token like Uniswap or Harvest at Harvest Finance, the farm token is a profit share token. So 30% mm -hmm. um, of any revenue generated by depositors, um, that goes to Harvest Finance um, depositors or the farm token. So there's different models that you can get out of these rewards tokens, and some of them can be more valuable than others. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And that's a great intro, Red. Thank you for that. And you're right, it is sort of the Wild West right now. And with these DeFi uh, projects, they're able to pop up sort of, you know, with a simple smart contract or with some simple coding and anonymous or non anonymous teams. And some of them can be more legitimate than others. There are some very legitimate projects in the space that are changing the way that finance is working. And I think that will move into traditional finance. But there also are some people that are just trying to pull a fast one. Uh, what do you think uh, is some of the best ways to navigate this yield farming space for those who are new to decentralized finance and trying to pick between, you know, what's good and what's bad? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I would start with a, an aggregator like Harvest Finance, because typically, whether it's us or some of the other ones that exist out there, they do the legwork for you. They're not going to deploy strategies that they really haven't tried to, to give an eye on and look at those what those smart contracts say. You know, it may not be perfect because they're not auditors themselves, but they, they have the know how the contracts and what things to look for and, and what can be relatively safe for depositors. So when you go into one of these aggregators like Harvest, um, you know, the, the strategies are presented a little bit more straightforward um, as opposed to you may really have to be digging out in the wild, jumping through hoops of some weird UX on some you know website that you may not even be sure is secure itself right mm -hmm. so um, again very wild west um, if you know what you're doing there you know it's potentially very lucrative right but um, harvest finance tries to remove a lot of those barriers makes it very simple for um, you know new users and then we also have some very advanced strategies where you can reap some very um, very very large apys kind of if you understand how the mechanics work mm-hmm Definitely. And do you see any anything wrong with chasing these super high yield strategies in DeFi? Um, not that I see that anything's wrong. I mean, you just have to kind of know what you're doing. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you just kind of have to understand like what's happening in the in the ecosystem as well. Um, you know, are these fly by night projects? Are you purposely participating in some like pump and dump scam, right? So there, you know, there may be some ethics questions to it. Mm -hmm. um, again, and that's definitely why I would recommend <clears throat> somebody like going to a harvest finance uh, because we're, you know, we try to shy away from those things, right? We're looking mm -hmm. at, at projects that aren't just going to be there for overnight because it takes longer to, to, to program a smart contract to do that, right? Don't mm -hmm. want to waste your time on those kind of things. So, you know, viability of a project is also something um, just as important as the security of the project is as well. Mm -hmm. 
definitely. And from what I understand with yield farming, if a project is brand new and there's not a lot of people that are farming it, then the rewards are going to be much higher. But when it gets set more saturated, then you know you're, the, the rewards have to be split between more people. So generally, the earlier the project, the higher reward, but also the higher the risk because there's not a lot of people in it, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but that's kind of alpha hunting because you'll see oftentimes the the contracts may deploy to the to the blockchain or the project itself may just announce, hey, farming is coming up in a week. So, mm -hmm. you know, here we are. Get, get yourselves ready. The contracts are out there and take a look. And so that can be um, extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if the projects, especially like Harvest Finance, so then we can say, okay, do a little bit of our due diligence and then have these out as soon as possible. Um, a great example would be Complify, um, is a new project that rolled out farming started yesterday, um, kind of like a derivative AMM, very cool project. They're giving away like $60 million um, in rewards in just one month, right? So pretty much like a, within a couple of hours of that farm being deployed, Harvest Finance is already offering a strategy for it for users, right? So, you know, just knowing that there's quality projects out there, you know, they gave a little bit of lead time on Complify. So it just allowed us to roll something out um, that's brand new, that's giving an insane amount of APYs because not many people um, know about it. And Harvest was there first. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And with all of these different projects, they all have different return rates and, and different yields. How do you easily switch between, you know, say you're in one and then the yield goes down and the other one goes up. Is the Harvest just allow you to move between different yield farming pools like really easily? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the strategies that we're actually trying to work on is kind of like a strategy splitter. Um, you know, if a new farm pops up, can we peel some money out of one strategy and put it to another one? So that's de definitely like a, a technology to function that we do have in there. But again, it goes back to when you choose quality farms um, and not these fly-by-night ones, the, the APYs actually turn out to be pretty steady. Um, in addition to the fact that we also add in our own farm reward tokens. So that actually really increases the stability of the offering of the APY. So like we really like to say, hey, you, you can join a pool and sit back pretty comfortably and know that you're really not going to have to jump around. Because even if the underlying strategy changes, uh, because maybe we switch from idle finance to kitchen DAO or, or whatever it is, right? The user doesn't have to do anything. It's just a strategical mm -hmm. change of the, mm -hmm. the contract underneath. To the user, they're just depositing and they're continuously making money. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. And <clears throat> you're talking about choosing the right projects to have on Harvest at least. And part of it was you talked about the smart contracts being deployed. There's also the auditing of the smart contracts. And there's a lot of platforms that are helping you know, do audits to make sure that there's no flaws in the contracts themselves so that hackers can't siphon funds out of that. Is that something that you ensure that there is an audit for the smart contract? Or does it? how much does that matter? Can you still just do yield farming on unaudited contracts and, and hope that it's fine? So it kind of depends. Um, without deep jumping too deeply into it, a lot of the credible projects generally use like a, a photocopy. It's called a, a fork of other contracts, smart mm -hmm. contracts. Like one of them is called Master Chef, um, mm -hmm. and those are like really well, like established, known. Does not really any known vulnerabilities within that contract. So if you can see a uh, uh, new project deploying and they use those pools, you can feel relatively safe. Although, again, they can hide something in the code, so you have to give it that once over. Um, you know, not every project launches with audits fully um, deployed, right? So that's mm -hmm. part of like the risk is, again, the devs can do all their due diligence, really look through it. Um, and there have been, have been times where we're like, eh, we're not comfortable with what this piece of code is. Doesn't mean it was necessarily a, like a rug pull kind of code. But if we don't understand it, we don't want to deploy it, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of balance there, but you also have to be careful. Uh, audits don't save everything, unfortunately, within, mm -hmm. within its relatively new uh, of its life. Harvest had like three or four audits done, a flash attack occurred. Uh, Wire and the gold standard of yield farming, the guys who kind of kicked off yield farming summer. Unfortunately, they experienced it, right? There's like a hack every other week. Mm -hmm. um, so again, audits don't solve everything, but they are very helpful, right? Because it's kind of like fresh eyes on the code, right? You sit there mm -hmm. and um, knock out that code yourself. You think you do it perfectly, but those other perspectives help you, right? But they're not a, they're not a solve-all. 
Definitely. Yeah, that's good advice. Thanks, Red. And I was looking at the strategies on Harvest and I saw most of the DeFi protocols uh, are running with Ethereum smart contracts, but there also is the Binance Smart Chain. And there's been a lot of projects that are working on that because it seems to be faster. It's a lot cheaper. It looks like Harvest Finance is building strategies for that as well. Can you talk about expanding out to Binance Smart Chain strategies um, and you know the strategies that you're taking on and having multiple protocols to do DeFi across? Sure. I mean, it's ultimately Binance Smart Chain is just a... Uh, like I guess you call a competitor chain to Ethereum, you know, they claim to offer better speeds, you know, yada, 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 right? Not going to go into all that, but ultimately they have farms there, right? Um, their framework is very similar to Ethereum's, um, if not just a straight copy of it, right? Um, so ultimately the smart contracts, you can still do the same checks and validations, right? So it was ultimately a decision on Harvest Finance uh, part to say, is it profitable to turn on some tractors and send them over there too, right? Mm -hmm. So we're still based on Ethereum. So we refer to it as like cross-chain farming, right? Or multi-chain mm -hmm. farming. Um, buying a smart chain, there's profits there. And let's go look at it. Um, you know, Polygon really rising fast in the ranks of things being deployed there. So another opportunity, should we look there and deploy Solana? You know, just all these other chains and farms and opportunities. So wherever the profit is, that's where we're going to go because we're a yield farming aggregator. So we're going to aggregate wherever the, the profits are. Definitely. That, that makes sense. And it is exciting to see all these other protocols sort of giving people a choice besides just running on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think that's going to help grow the space a lot more. And it is still confusing for people that are even, you know, trading on regular trip cryptocurrency traders that are on centralized exchanges are, are sort of scared to touch DeFi, it seems. Um, do you see any breakthrough in, in having more people get into DeFi? Is there something specific or is it just having an aggregator that makes it easy uh, for people that don't understand code? Or is there something else in terms of getting more widespread adoption of like yield farming? I think it's just continuously pushing out like new cutting edge projects. And you don't hear about that as much because it's not as sexy as like the 10,000 APY farm that just opened up or Warren Buffett said XYZ or, you know, Elon Musk talked about Dogecoin, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's the stuff that steals the headlines. But there are some really amazing stuff that's coming out. Um, APY and finance, the, you know, tokenization of future yield. I mentioned Complify, derivatives, AMM, where you can 5X um, long or short with no margin calls, no forced liquidations. And it's all DeFi, right? Mm -hmm. um, so all these, like, you know, projects that are coming up, you know, maybe even individually they're really cool. But then when you when you can build that like money Lego concept where if I hey I can put some money into Abe, you know, leverage it for a different coin that then I can put into Harvest Finance and then I can take the Harvest Finance coin and then I can put that in HP Wine Finance and I can future leverage that for four, more money and then I could actually repeat the cycle and do like a farmception thing, right? Mm -hmm. Individually, right? Like all those things sound cool, but then when I draw up that whole long string of stuff, it's like, whoa, there's a lot of like connectivity between these things that maybe you've never heard about, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's just definitely building up these projects and continuing to grow the space. I mean, talking about uh, three, four years ago in 2017, just a bunch of ICOs and ideas and white papers and like 95% of those failed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think those 5% are really starting to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And then projects that kind of saw the failure of all that 95% rate they kind of came up with, oh, here's liquidity farming or your yield farming. Here's a new way to bootstrap our, our project. And so I think that's brought in a whole new wave of like excitement um, into the ecosystem, which you're kind of seeing today. So, um, you know, I think there's just a lot of potential there. You just got to look past like all the, the media headline stuff and mm -hmm. see, okay, there's actually good quality stuff here. And if we can make it a little bit simpler for people, and I always say Aunt Matilda, that's my random name that I use, but if anybody like Aunt Matilda can use Ethereum without ever having to miskey an address and lose their life mm -hmm. savings by a misclick, right? Like that's when we're really going to have mainstream adoption. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And you know, Harvest Finance is already really popular and you guys are doing a great job. And I'm curious as to what are the next big things that are coming out or what is your team working on to release uh, for either next versions or just to the public? What, what's coming next in the next few months? 
Uh, one of the things that's cool is we're working like with a project or a company called DS Spot, uh, really helping us with like some new UX UI concepts. They dropped like a teaser video on Twitter. It was really cool. I felt like I was playing a game of Overwatch when I was done watching it. So I'm like, oh, that's going to be really exciting just to kind of get something really fresh, like version 2.0 of Harvest Finance uh, website. Um, you know, just talking with projects like Zapperfy. When you have a, over a hundred different strategies on Harvest Finance, and all of them pretty much take a different currency, that can be like really like overwhelming for a customer, especially a new person, right? Um, and, oh, now I got to jump over this currency or this currency. But like with a, a project like Zapperfy, you can pretty much put any currency in, and it'll switch you to whatever currency you need, and, and instantly drop you into that strategy at Harvest Finance. So, you know, just trying to really make it easy for the user to experience DeFi, experience like, you know, these 20 to 70%, 10,000% APY, some of them just being really ridiculous. Uh, But anybody like Aunt Matilda, okay, I have some USDC dollar coins, very something very simple. Mm -hmm. How can I just deposit, sit back and relax, right? So, you know, that's what we're really trying to accomplish. And again, just looking at it, all those various opportunities out there, where it's finance, smart chain, or, or Polygon, uh, whether there's new ways to come up with like hedge fund strategies, uh, you know, who knows, right? Because yield farming may go away in a year, and it may be something different. It was ICOs at one point, and now it's, um, you know, now it's yield farming, right? So who knows what a year a year from now will be? Ultimately, I think it's really capitalizing on you know deploying all these strategies really trying to bring in users and help them understand hey DeFi is legitimate Mm -hmm. and then you know as new projects come to fruition how can we collaborate through like the council of 69 um, to become partners with that project and grow and kind of intertwine them into what we're doing Mm -hmm. definitely well i'm excited to see that play out and I'm sure the viewers would want to follow along with that as well. What's the best way for the viewers to get involved with the community, watch the updates, and just go on to Harvest and, and start yield farming? One of the things I'm really proud of like at Harvest Finance is actually the, the Discord community we built. Um, so Discord is a chat program. Um, there's like 10 other moderators there just like me. We all have like different strengths and skills. So I kind of like do the podcast thing. Um, other guys are the technical dev um, kind of people. Other people are just really cool with the competitions that we're doing. We're participating in a 20 project meme contest that's giving away over $20,000 in prizes just for making some, you know, dumb memes on the internet about these projects, right? So like, you know, any of your viewers watching that thing's running for two weeks, Mm -hmm. come create some memes and earn some, you know, some money, right? So there's just so many different things kind of going on at Harvest. Um, So come connect us with us in the Discord chat or just follow us on Twitter because pretty much the same thing gets relayed there. All of our contests, all of our weekly updates, everything that's really happening or any changes that are going on. But, you know, for me, it's all about the Discord and just really being able to connect, um, you know, personally with the community. Definitely. Well, I will leave those links uh, read in the description box below for the viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on to talk about Harvest Finance. All the best with the platform moving forward uh, with you and your team. And let's follow up in the near future. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me again.